It's uh, 11.45 and we're just getting into Dublin City. We still have a little ways to go to the airport, but I thought it would be a good time to tell you about the trip and why I had to, you know, come up with the idea and why I decided to do it and why am I taking the bus at 9 o'clock at night to get a plane that's leaving at 5.45? Well, unfortunately, the way the buses work out, you know, and because of good old Brexit that happened, you know, it's, it's considered an international flight, so you have to arrive two hours before. Uh, so that means I have to be at the check-in at uh, 3.45, and then they say I have to go through security by 4.15 to make the uh, flight. So thanks to Boris and Nigel with their Brexit plans and that. So and so now I'm going to be uh, getting into the airport probably around five past five past uh, twelve, maybe ten past, because there were some delays on the road. There were some detours for uh, work. So when I get into the airport, I'm going to show you around what it looks like at after twelve, when there's probably no flights until the morning. Then I'm going to make my way around towards uh, to see if there's any restaurants open. I don't think so, um, but there is a McDonald's close by, like relatively close by, like a few minutes walk. So I'll go there and get some to eat. I'm really hungry. All I had was some, uh, some noodles this afternoon and waiting for dinner. So we'll go over to McDonald's and see what they have an offer because I did check it out. It was open until 24 hours. So now you see we're, we're just driving right through Dublin still. It's very dark, but the lights are on around. So I'm going to be heading out there. I'll show you what we're going. We have a big, big weekend planned. I've been looking forward to going to Edinburgh for quite a while now. Um, the reason why I picked it, it was I uh, went through the flight scanners, uh, sky scanners, and I wanted to see you know what kind of deals were and that was an incredible offer it was 62 euros uh, return um, for the weekend and I said okay I'll jump at that I tried to couch surfing but I didn't really get any heels hits for that now probably that was my fault too because I picked the two days together where in hindsight I should have picked one for the Friday uh, Friday night and one for the Saturday night I probably would have had a, a better chance at that but I, what I didn't turn is I got two different hostels that are in the old quarter the old town so I'll be able to show you what that's like and we got a whole bunch a uh, bunch of things to do Saturday or Friday is supposed to be nice it was supposed to be raining the whole time but I checked on my uh, phone and uh, today it said it switched so Friday is supposed to be sunny in Edinburgh so I'll be making my most of it I'll obviously be without, without sleep as much as I can to get as much filming done on this Friday um, but so stay tuned and we'll see how I get there into uh, into Edinburgh from the uh, and get into the city there is Wexford bus and there is the entrance to Terminal 1 and I go uh, get orientated there and we'll see What's it like inside? And if not, we'll head to move out towards uh, McDonald's. Check out. Maybe we won't have to go to McDonald's. Let's go take a look at. We're not on the line, so we're in departures. Departures are out that way. A few things open. Please hold the 100. 545 Edinburgh Ryanair, FR 812, 13. So I guess this is where I'd go. 
Anyways, leave it to me now. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and uh, then see if I can get some meat. Okay, so McDonald's it is. I found one here on my phone. You can see where I am. It's a 10 minute walk. They have uh, the Burger King upstairs, but it's closed. So they have a few places uh, downstairs were open, but they were just sort of coffee places and I think a restaurant. And I, I remember looking at it last time. It was not really what I wanted and it was overpriced and stuff. So uh, we have lots of time to kill at 12 o'clock at night. We don't have to start really worrying about till about half three to we get the board on into the plane and that. So we'll take a nice leisurely stroll to get to the McDonald's. Here we are. There's the magic arches. Wasn't too bad. Let's go in and see. What are the orders? Alrighty, 10.50. Okay, so strawberry milkshake. I haven't had one in eons. Had a Big Mac. It has to be, I'd say, good, better part of, um, better part of 14, 15 years since I had a Big Mac, if not longer, and some fries. So I'll put the old salt on it. And then I got some red sauce. And I got a double Big Mac. I prefer vinegar on that, but all they had was ketchup. So. There you go. Now let's take a look at this. See what this is like. Here's what it looks like. Not exactly the picture. Could use more sauce. Chips or chips? <clears throat> so, I'm gonna finish this and then get back to the block. There. So, that's what's left. I wasn't a big fan of the old milkshake. It's too thick actually. Um, should have had the Coke Zero and that would have been better. Um, but I'm not going to eat the rest of the chips. Just going to chill out for a bit and then head back to walk to the airport. Okay, so quick recap of the McDonald's. The first one I've had in probably 15 years. Big Mac was probably too much patties. It was not enough sauce. Uh, chips were eh, what the McDonald's chips are. I uh, shouldn't have went for the strawberry milkshake. It was too thick. It's, it's all chemicals and... Uh, wouldn't really recommend it. The only thing that was good about it was the price. It was only like a tenner. And we're at the airport because all the meals in the airport, you know, a small little old sandwich would be about seven or eight euros of coffee. So it cost me way more than that. So anyways, that's done and dusted. Now we'll just make our way back to the airport and uh, wait. So here I am for the next couple of hours. I'm going to be going through that gate right there, number 13. <clears throat> so I have to be there at 3.45 and we'll just have a quick check at the old watch there, or the phone, and it's 1.14. So I have uh, two hours and 15 minutes to wait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my alarm uh, for about three o'clock and see if I can get some shut eye.
little confusion. I wasn't sure if I needed to uh, go to the gate because I'm not checked in. So I asked somebody, I said, no, I have the boarding pass, just have the passport and go to the boarding check-in area. So I attempt that. Okay, so that was easier than I thought. So now I, it's, it's uh, 2.35 and on the side, go to 118 is where I'm going to next. So I'm inside. Uh, that was easy. Like I didn't have to go through any of that stuff and it's 2.36 and my flight's at 5.45. So, oh, pay as you go. So if you wanted a water, it cost you a yo-yo. I might partake in that because uh, I'm thirsty and I have a few hours, so, and I have a three euros coin left, so. So, we're just walking towards the gate. Up and leave. Take a lot of courage just to live out your dreams. Bigger picture I could see if I just close my eyes. Have the foresight to believe Time don't move backwards, it speeds To the future fearlessly Charging forward when I open my mouth Though I may not know how I know I was born to sing Travel the world Raise baby girls Okay, so that's onto the plane now. There it is. It's starting to get lighter. It's been a long day of traveling so far. I woke up at 6 yesterday morning. So we're up almost 24 hours now. There's all the planes. Way to walk ahead of us. <laughs> I assume we're going all the way, right? <laughs> well, that was weird. We were standing on the runway for about 15 minutes. Pilot was looking around. Hope we didn't find anything wrong. But anyways, we're boarding now. So they had all the people with the uh, overhead compartment luggage go in first. But they were standing when we got out there, so there was some delay for us getting in. So good thing I had my jumper and my jacket now because it's quite cold out here.
So that was it. We're out of the airport. Just walked right out. Uh, left the plane on the runway and then out. Now I just have to uh, try to find the tram that goes into uh, Edinburgh to the old town. Supposedly it costs seven pounds fifty. Um, it's supposed to be around here, so I'm gonna take a look, see if I can find it when I get it, buy the ticket, and get on the tram. So that's the price of one tram ticket to Edinburgh. <coughs> so it was seven pounds fifty. Up and leave. Take a lot of courage just to live out your dream. A picture I could see if I just close my eyes Have the foresight to believe Time don't move backwards, it speeds To the future fearlessly Charging forward when I open my mouth Though I may not know how I know I was born to sing Okay, so I just got off the uh, tram, St. Andrew's Square, and it's quite breathtaking. The old buildings all around us. You know. And this side there is Royal Bank of Scotland. There's a big statue right there. And then there's another... Okay, now we've arrived into Edinburgh City. Uh, the next couple of vlogs, I have a whole bunch of series of vlogs planned out. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of it. This is the first vlog of just showing how I arrived in Edinburgh from taking the bus, the planes, and the, the trains to get into Edinburgh. Now, I'm going to have a whole bunch of interesting events coming up over the next few uh, episodes. So stay with me and make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I hope you enjoy these Edinburgh videos that are becoming shortly.